Thank you, Lord. Are we on? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you give me a big shout? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How about hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For dying for me. For dying for me. And raising from the dead. And raising from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, welcome you. Welcome to you this wonderful Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says in John 10, 10, Jesus made a statement. He said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus came for one purpose, to die so you and I could have life. That's what that song we just heard was about. It was the, it was the end of the beginning. It ended the Old Testament. It ended Jesus' uh, work on this earth, and it began. Now, new life in you and I. So today I want to look at I want to look at you through Jesus. We want to talk about you being raised in newness of life and realize who you are in Christ. That you are something. You are special. You are the purpose Jesus died. You are the purpose God sent Jesus to this earth. You are the purpose he suffered. Because so you and I could live this life and live a good life. Hallelujah. If you'll turn in your Bibles to John chapter 12, John chapter 12, Jesus was talking about himself in this verse, in John chapter 12, verse number 24, Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much grain. You know, many times in Jesus' life, he uses uh, natural things to show us uh, uh, spiritual things. He, he uses an example here. He's talking about a grain of wheat or a seed. He said this, unless this grain of wheat falls to the ground. And then if you put a grain of wheat and you stick it right here on this pulpit, it'll stay there until, you know, eternity. Nothing will happen. But if you take that grain, you take that seed and you put it in the ground, something's going to happen. And that's what Jesus was talking about himself. He was comparing himself to the seed. He said, what's going to happen is, they're going to put me in the ground. They're going to plant me in the ground like a seed. And if I die, I'm going to produce something. And what he did is, when he died on the cross, and they put him into the, into the grave, Jesus, uh, three days later, he rose again from the, de from the dead, and when he rose again from the dead, he brought with him this abundant life that, that he talks about in John 10.10. 10. He said, put the seed into the ground, it will die, and then it will produce. See, what a seed has to do, what you have to do and I have to do, is we have to die to ourselves. To, to be able to partake of this life that Jesus had. So we have to die to ourselves for this, uh, this process to begin. You know, I looked up, I was looking up in, the, in uh, how a seed works. What happens when a seed goes into the ground? Well, if you take a little seed, whatever it is, and some of you are, maybe are planting a garden this spring, you put a seed in the ground, you don't think about it much, you just put it in, because you know, I'll put it in the ground, and it's going to grow, you know, as long as I do something to you. If you put seed, a seed into the ground, what do you got to put on top of it? Dirt and water. Dirt and water. So what happens with a seed is when a seed has a little shell around it, a little shell around it, and there's a process called... Uh, imbibation, which says that seed is in the ground, when you put water on it, water begins to, to uh, go into that seed. And when it gets, it'll go through the outer shell, and when it gets into the seed, it'll start a process that busts open the seed, busts open the shell, and then the, um, the, the, the seed begins to put out a root seeking for water. And so, <clears throat> this is the same process that that happens, uh, happens with Jesus. Jesus said, I'm just like a grain of wheat. I have to go in the ground. And you know, the Bible talks about, uh, about the washing of the water by the word. The word of God it is the water which causes the, the, uh, the seed to, to bust open. And when Jesus busted open out of that ground some 2,000 years ago, he began to produce. 
And what he produced is more people like him. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, will be saved. The Bible says that, that if you come to God, that he will change you. He'll make you into a new creation. So Jesus, what Jesus did is he died to self. This is a key to walking in the fullness of the kingdom. You have to die to yourself. That seed, when the seed goes into the ground, it gives up all itself. Because once it goes into the ground and, and it gets watered, no longer will it be a seed. It's got to die to itself before it can live. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus walked on this earth for 33 years. But then he was crucified. And, and, and you notice what he did. When he went to the cross, they didn't force him to go to the cross. He went willingly. He gave his life willingly. He, say, he, he said that, that I, I'm going to lay down my life for you. And when he did it willingly is when uh, he died to himself. He was put into the ground, or we know it was, it was a tomb that he was put in. But uh, when he was raised, he was raised in newness of life, producing much grain or many other believers or saints like you and I. So the same process has to, go, has to go like this for us. We have to die to self. And by faith, we are raised with him. We're, we're buried with him and then we're raised in newness of life. This new life that we're raised in is God's life. See, a, a problem that we have, a lot of people have as Christians, we try to live our own life. Your own life is dead. You don't want your old self no more. You want the new life that Jesus brings. Amen. Because that's the real life. The Bible calls it the Greek word zoe. It's a complete life. Whenever we try to do things on our own is when we begin to suffer and fail. Whenever we try to do things on our own is when we run into trouble. That's the scripture I read earlier. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out your way. Ask God his way. Go to the Bible and find out what God would do. Because this is where the life is. The life is in the word of God. So he goes on and says in verse 25, He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in the world will keep it, will keep it for eternal life. He's talking about trading in your own life. Lose your life and you'll get eternal life. You will, write, you will raise in newness of life. This is, this is the, the struggle I think that people have with their life is, is seeing that if I surrender all, you know, it's kind of scary. What's going to happen? What's, what's God going to do? You know, and, and God wants us to have faith. Hebrews eleven six says, without him, without faith, it's impossible to please him. He wants us to just throw himself, throw ourselves at him. You know, back in, uh, in, in 1999, when I first, I first started full-time pastoring, I was pastoring before that, but I was working. And I was trusting in my job to, to, to take care of me. Because I, I was getting paid for my job. And I, and I, I hadn't stepped out on the water yet and, and trusted Jesus. So back then I had, to make, I had an opportunity. And I made a choice. I left my other job because the calling of God came upon my life. I trusted in God with all my heart. And I'm telling you, it was scary. It was kind of scary because I, I had a big family. I had a lot of kids. I had a big house. I had, I had payment. I had all kinds of things that, that my mind was, was dealing with. But I decided to trust in the Lord with all my heart. And you know what? God came through. He always will come through. He always will come through. The problem is where we get afraid of stepping out in faith. And so this morning as we talk about this newness of life, if you want to experience the real life of God, you've got to die to yourself. You have to die. You have to be crucified with Christ. And then you will raise, rise up again in newness of life. Let's go over to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. There's a lot of stuff in this scripture. I, I could probably preach on this, these uh, first 
10 or 11 verses for a week, but we'll just, uh, we'll just keep it down to three or four hours, okay? Just kidding. Romans chapter 6, verse number 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any more to it? Now, now listen to this, verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of you as were baptized into Christ have, were baptized into his death? As many of you as were baptized into Christ. When you get born again, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, that by one spirit we are baptized in the one body. When he says here, he says, do you not know that as many of us were baptized? That's not talking about water baptism. Baptism is talking about being immersed, because it says, into Christ Jesus. So as many of us as were immersed into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. So we died just like Jesus died. Died to self. See, that's what Jesus died to his humanity uh, to take on the life of God. And that's what you and I have to do. We have to recognize that when we, when, when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we are now baptized into Christ, or in other words, we have been immersed into the body of Christ. And because we are immersed into the body of Christ, we, are, we have been immersed into his death. So the same resurrection power that was on Jesus has to come upon you. And I know it does because Romans 8, 11 says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. So then he, then he goes on in verse 4 and says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We are also raised in newness of life. This resurrection thing that Jesus did is, as that song we listened to before, is it's the beginning. His, his death, burial, and resurrection was the beginning. The beginning of what? The beginning of our life. It was the birth. It was, it was the, the beginning of the church. There was not a church before this time. There were, people went to a synagogue and worshipped. That wasn't the church. The church is made up of born-again believers. And when we are born again, when we have give ourselves to Jesus and we come to him, we are then raised in newness of life. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. See, he's trying to get across to us that we're new. We are different. When we receive Jesus, we receive newness of life. Now that same resurrection power that was in Jesus abides in us. Jesus made some some really fantastic statements about us that, that it's hard for people to grasp and people to understand and believe. You know, Jesus said that we are joint heirs with him. Joint. You know, that means together. Equal. Equal heirs with him. Because he's the head of the body. The, everything he has, we have. Praise the Lord. Everything he did, we can do. You go, whoa, pastor, hold on there. You mean I can do what Jesus did? Well, isn't that what Jesus said, John 14, 12? The works that I do, you will do also. What did Jesus do? He healed the sick. He cast out the devil. He raised the dead. He, he uh, calmed the seas. He spoke to the wind. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Christians live in, a, in this world far below the power that God has invested in you. God has invested in you the same power that he invested in Jesus. Because it's the same spirit that lives in us. And so when it says here that we, were, we should walk in newness of life, that means we can walk in the same resurrection power that was in Jesus that rose in Verse 5 says, if we have been united together in likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. My goodness, that's almost too good. I mean, you got to look at this again. What do you mean? We, if we were united, 
in his death. Well, we were united into his death because we look back in, in verse 3, it says, if we were baptized into Christ, we were baptized into his death. And then it, then it says in, in verse 5, if we were united in the likeness of his death, which we were, which it just told us two, two verses before, certainly, say certainly, certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Jesus rose in resurrection. What, what happened when Jesus rose in resurrection? He brought with him eternal life. The moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the moment you invite him in, you step off into eternal life. We have the same life in us that Jesus has in him. It says we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. We are raised to be like Jesus. You know, that's like one of the things I remember when I was writing this down. I just, I wrote in my notes, I wrote, wow! That's, that's really amazing. We, were, we have the same resurrection that Jesus had. The same powers in us. The same life that's in Jesus. See, we think about Jesus sometimes and we think, yeah, that's Jesus. He can do them miracles because he's Jesus. But wait a minute. How did he do them miracles? He did them by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you. So if Jesus said we can do these things, then guess what? We can do these things. Our thing is now that we have to step out in faith and do it. We have to lay hands on the sick. We have to cast out the devil. We have to change things by our words. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus spoke to things. He spoke to a tree and cursed it. He spoke to the waves and calmed them. He spoke to the wind and told it to be, peace, to be peaceful. And that's what he wants you and I to do. Use the power that he's given. The power that he's given us is in his word. And the power that he's given us is, is through our word, that we speak his word. And he goes on in verse 6, says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified. What you got to do is you got to know that your old man was crucified. That means your fleshly man. Just like Jesus' flesh was crucified on a cross, we must crucify our flesh. In other words, we don't, we don't actually have to go nail ourselves to a cross, but crucifying our flesh means... I don't look for anything for me anymore. I look for it for Jesus. I do it for the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, whoever loses his life is going to find his life. You know, that, that's kind of a little tricky thing, I guess, we, we have to do. We have to say, well, I die to myself. We have to give up our life. And all of a sudden, his life begins to flow. His life comes into us. Knowing that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away for, way with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. That's an awesome statement. As a believer, we have been freed from sin. Why? Because Jesus fulfilled the law. The law brought death, but Jesus brought life. Sin brings death, but Jesus brings life. Now we're in Christ. We're in Christ. In Christ, we are sinless. You, and you, spiritually, you can't sin anymore. Unless you totally deny Jesus. Can Jesus sin? Can Jesus sin? No. If we're in Him, can we sin? No. No. We can. Spiritually, we can. I mean, you can walk in the flesh and do things. Remember, sin is, you know, don't think of sin as this big word, sin, explanation point, explanation point. Think of it as missing the mark. That's what sin actually means. It means you just didn't line up according to how God wanted you to do it. And, and when you look at it, that you might be very close, but you didn't hit the bullseye. And so all of us in the natural do that, but we are not in the natural. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
So we don't have to worry about that. Then he goes on and says uh, in verse 8, And we, now if we die with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. This is our part. You have to change your thinking. You have to change, you have to be renewed in your mind to understand that we live with him. We're dead to ourselves and we're alive to him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. If he dies no more, guess what? You don't die anymore either. Now we're talking spiritual. Your physical body is going to die, but your spiritual body, the real you, the inner man, is going to live forever and ever. Death no longer has dominion over us. You know what happens to a Christian when he dies? A Christian gets off, just steps off into glory. Hallelujah. But the absence of the body is to be present with the Lord. If our physical body is our earth suit, just like this suit is, is the suit I wore this morning. I will, you know, later on, uh, when I leave here today, I'll take this suit off. I'll just take the suit off. When, when it's time for you to leave the earth, you're going to take this suit off. This earthly suit is just going to come off. And your spirit man, which is just like you, but, but a spiritual being, is just going to is just going to take off and go to heaven. And then at the resurrection, you will you'll receive your new and glorified body. Hallelujah. All right, let's go over and take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're talking about being raised in the newness of life. How Jesus died so you can have life. You know, I, I see uh, advertisements on TV and stuff, and people will be doing something. Maybe they're, you know, they're having a wonderful vacation, and, and they sit down and say, ah, oh, this is life. Well, that's not really life. I mean, if you're having a good time, but you're not going to sit in that spot for 90 years and enjoy it. But you can enjoy your life every day of the week by allowing the life of Jesus in you. See, if, if, if we think that, that doing the fun things, whatever the fun thing is to you, and, and there's nothing wrong with doing fun things, God wants you to have a good time, but if we think that's really life, that's living, you know, people say that, oh, oh that's living. No, being in Christ, that's living. Amen. Amen? Doing the Amen. works of God, that's living. Raising the dead, that's living. Healing the sick, that's living. Casting out the devil, that's living. That's really, the, this, these, are, these are things that really, really are living. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 35, it says, But someone will say, How are the dead raised? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. Remember, we cannot have life unless we die to ourselves. He says, foolish one, what you what is sown, what is sown is not made alive until it dies. Verse 37, and what you sow, you do not you do not sow the body that shall be uh, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. See, God's going to give you a spiritual body. God's going to give you a body that's full of life. I truly believe, I, I believe I wrote a book back there called, called Divine Health, God's Design. I really truly believe we can walk in divine health. That we don't have to get sick. People don't have to be sick. Jesus paid the price for it. I, you know, I pretty much walked in divine health for the last 34 years. I mean, I, I believe it. Well, I'm, I'm, I know it. I don't have to believe it. I know it. I know there's life in Christ. And that's what it says here, that God will give us each a new body. <clears throat> where, where God raised us up in newness of life, life like Jesus had, eternal life. You know, when Jesus was here on the earth, nowhere do you read in the, in the scriptures that Jesus had a, he never called his disciples and said, you guys go today, I've got to take a sick day. I have to take a day off, I'm not feeling good. He never did that. You don't read that anywhere. He was always full of life. See, life triumphs over death. 
Amen. 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 Hell triumphs over sickness. If we have the life of God in us, we are immune. You know, read Psalm 91. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling. What is your dwelling? Well, you have a house, apartment, wherever you live in. But he's talking about this temple, your physical body. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And it's God that lives in you? This temple is, is made in the image of God. And so no evil shall befall me, no plague, no sickness shall come near my dwelling. You know, it's a good thing to stand on Psalm 91. You know, I, I got a good one for you right now that you, you need to go to Psalm 91. Because there, there's a part of Psalm 91 that says that God, that God uh, redeems us from the perilous pestilence. Pests are pests, right? You know, you're going to go on a picnic this summer or you're going to go out camping. And if, you, if you're not careful, there's these little things that go zzz, zzz, And they're going to try, they're going to come like Dracula to try to suck your blood. But stand on the word of God. Now, I am redeemed from the past. You have power over the past. You have dominion over the past. I've been doing this for years, taking dominion over bugs. Dominion over the mosquitoes. I kid you not, I can stand by some people and, and they'll, be, they'll be swapping and slapping and, and uh, getting bit and I go, what are you doing? They say, well, how come they don't bite you? I say, I'm part Indian, I'm one with the bugs. <laughs> No, I say that I've been delivered, uh, delivered from the pests. I've been delivered from the plagues. I'm delivered from the pests. This is what Jesus did. So Jesus never suffered these things. He suffered persecution, which we all will suffer. We will be persecuted for our faith. But anything that's got to do with, with the cursed earth has nothing to do with you and I. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. When Jesus hung on the cross, Think about it. Picture him on the cross. He was beaten. He was bruised. He was whipped. He had, he had you know, he looked like a, what we would call a bloody mess. There were, there were whip marks on his back, whip marks on his chest. There was a crown of thorns stuck into his head, which caused his head to bleed. Do you, you ever bump your head, cut your head? Ever have, have that happen? Heads bleed a lot. I mean, all the, all, because there, there's not much room between your, your skull and your skin, and that's where all your blood vessels are. So if you cut your head, that blood comes out pretty fast. I mean, thank God it, it stops quick too, but it, it comes out of there real fast. So when they stuck that crown of thorns into his head, his blood began to flow. And if you can picture him on this cross, with all the blood flowing out of him, where's that blood going to flow? Everything flows down, right? So as he's on a cross, everything's flowing down. Flowing down his body, flowing down his legs, onto his feet, and then it drops off onto the ground. So when his blood came out onto the ground, remember back in the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned, God pronounced a curse on the earth. <coughs> he cursed, he said, the ground is cursed because of your sin. But when Jesus' blood touched the earth, his blood sanctified the earth. His blood poured out into the earth and the, and the ground became sanctified. His precious, the Bible calls it the precious blood of Jesus. The, the ground then, which now had his blood in, is the same ground that they buried him in. And now that precious blood, which is in the earth now, instead of crying out vengeance, it's crying out mercy. It's crying out forgiveness. It's crying out love. So when they, they put his, ground, his body into the ground, the, bro, the blood began to flood uh, his corpse with life. And Jesus was reborn. Jesus was born again. 
Wait, wait a minute. You mean Jesus died, actually really died? Well, the Bible says he died on the cross. Jesus said in Revelation 1.18, I am he who lives and was dead, and I'm alive forevermore. Jesus himself said, I died. And he was raised up by the blood and the word and the spirit. He was resurrected from that grave. He said, I was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. The same life that he gave to you and I. He rose and came out of that tomb. And he brought with him, when he came out of the tomb, he brought back to mankind life again. He, through the word, began to produce more Christians, more believers, more of those who are just like him. Three days, three glorious days. On Friday, he was beaten, he was bruised, he was crucified, he died, and was buried. On Saturday, the second day, he went down to the bowels of the earth. The Bible says, the Bible even says in the scriptures, some people say, well, Jesus never went to hell. Well, yes, he did. If he didn't go to hell, then you still owe a penalty. The Bible, the Bible says in, 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 the, in the book of Acts, it actually says that, that God spoke and said, you, I, you will not leave my soul in Hades or hell. You will not allow me to see corruption. So on the second day, Jesus went down to hell. He defeated the devil. He, paid, he, he wiped out the handwriting which, which was in the law. He, he canceled the law. And then he took Satan and all the demons. And the Bible says in the book of Colossians that he triumphed, triumphed over them. And he made an open show of them. In other words, he paraded them around. Before all the devils, all the angels, everything spiritual knew that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Jesus is the ruler. Satan's not a ruler. He's a ruler of darkness, but we don't live in darkness. We live in light. Amen? Amen. Praise so he went to hell. He defeated the devil. The Bible says he has the keys of, of death and the grave and Hades. He took them from the devil. Jesus has the keys to them now. So no more can the devil lock you up. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are safe. You are safe. Glory to God. So Friday he died. He was buried. Saturday, he went and paid the price for your sin and mine. He, he fulfilled the law. He took, he, uh, he took the devil and made an open show of him. He took away all of his power. But then on Sunday, he rose again. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, he came back. He was telling his disciples all the time he was here, he was telling them, uh, they're going to crucify me and I'm going to die. And they, they wouldn't even listen to it. They didn't want to hear it. It's kind of like something when somebody's telling you something, you know, nah, 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 I don't want to hear it. Too much information, right? They didn't want to hear that Jesus was going to die. But Jesus said, wait a minute. It's better for you that I die. Because when I die, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And not only will he be with you, he'll be in you. See, Jesus couldn't go into his disciples, but the Holy Spirit can go into every one of us. Amen. That's why it's so important that Jesus finished his work and he rose again. So on Sunday, he arose. He, he is alive forevermore. And if you are in Christ, so are you. The second death has no power over you no more. There is no power. If you are in Christ, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And that when you leave this earth, you'll go with him. That's why it is so important to make Jesus the Lord of your life. I pray that you have done this today, that you made Jesus the Lord of your life. You know, nowadays you're hearing all this stuff um, on TV and the internet and everywhere else. They're, always, they're all saying, well, there's many ways to God. There's many gods. You know, just, just we all serve the same. There's only one big God out there and all of them, 
All these religions point to that. Well, that's not true at all. Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the way, not a way, the way, the truth, and the life. No one, say no one, no one. comes to the Father except by me. Amen. Amen. So you can't get there through Muhammad. You can't get there through Allah. You can't get there through Confucius. You can't get there through Mary. You can't get there through anybody but through Jesus. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. There's a big difference in these other gods than Jesus. You know, I like to tell this story, and this is my Resurrection Sunday story. Most of you have heard it before, but I'm going to tell you it again. I'll tell you about a vision. About the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit showed me one time. Took me up in a, in, a, in a vision. And he said, come on with me, Pastor Tom. I want to show you something. I want to show you something about all these other religions and all these other gods. That there is a difference. So he took me over, by the, in the spirit, he took me over uh, in, into the uh, Middle East, in, into Asia. He took me to the, to, the, to the grave of Buddha. And by the spirit he said, Pastor Tom, look inside of here. What do you see in Buddha's grave? And I said, Holy Spirit, I see bones in there. He said, yes, that's the bones of Buddha. Then he took me over to the Middle East and he looked, showed me another grave. It was the grave of the prophet Muhammad. And he said, Pastor John, look inside of that grave. What do you see in there? I said, well, Lord, I see bones in there. He said, that's right, Pastor Tom. That, that's the bones of Muhammad. And then he took me over to Israel. He took me to the grave of Jesus. And he said, now, Pastor Tom, I want you to look inside of this grave and what do you see? Look into the tomb of Jesus. And so I looked into the tomb of Jesus and the Holy Spirit said, well, what do you see now? And I said, I don't see anything. And the Holy Spirit says, that's right. Because he's not dead. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is alive. He's not a dead God like all the other dead gods. He's alive. He's a living God. He, he was, is, and he will be forever. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a risen king. Amen? Amen. Jesus is alive. So I have a question for you this morning. Are you enjoying your life? Yeah. I mean, is life a joy to you? If not, maybe you're not dead yet. Not physically. Remember I talked about crucifying, giving up your own life. When you come to the point in life where you say, Jesus, I can't do it anymore. I know I'm a failure in myself. I can't save myself. I don't have the power in myself to forgive my sin. I don't have the power to, to go to heaven myself. I need you. When you come to that spot where you, you realize that you need a savior, you die to self, is when you're going to raise again in newness of life. Raise again in newness of life. I got one more scripture I want you to see here. In Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus said in verse number 24. He says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does, does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not, and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Now everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be likened to a foolish man who built his house on the sand. 
And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it fell, and great was its fall. You notice both houses had the same thing happen to them. Both houses had the wind blowing on them. Both houses had the, had the rain coming on. But one of them was built on the rock. One of them was a person who has realized that they needed a Lord and Savior. Is a person who has given their life to God. And were ra was raised in newness of life. The other, the other person was one who said, I don't need God. I can do it myself. And so the Bible says, when, when the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, it fell. See, without Jesus being our rock, we have no hope. There's no hope in this life without Jesus. There's no hope. The only way to heaven is through the risen Christ. The only way is to do what Jesus said. Well, what did Jesus say? In John chapter 3, listen to me. And all you people out there listening on the internet, listen to me. Jesus said a man cannot see the kingdom of heaven unless he is born again. There's no understanding of God. That's why God is foolish to some people. They can't see. Their eyes are blinded because they have not walked through the veil yet. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we walk through the veil. We become born again. That newness of life comes up in us, and we are born again. Amen? Amen. What I'd like to do this morning before I close is, I, everyone here, I'd like to pray with you. If you have never asked Jesus in your life, this could be the most amazing day of your life. Anybody out there, you're listening to me on, on the internet, this could be the best day of your life. Because if you will accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will die to yourself and you will raise, raise up again in the of life. It's very simple. Because the Bible says that in Romans chapter 10, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. So I'd like everybody to pray this week. Pray it out loud. Pray it so anybody listening to us on the internet can hear us. Amen. I'll read you in a short prayer. Now if you pray this prayer and you truly believe it, you believe that Jesus died on the cross. I mean, it's, it's Resurrection Sunday. You know, don't look to the Easter Bunny. He didn't die for you. Amen. It was Jesus who did. Look to Jesus. If you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, the only ingredient that's missing is that you confess it as your Lord. So just pray this very simple prayer with me. Everyone here, everyone listening, just say, Jesus, Jesus, I come to you today. I come to you today. I know I need a savior. I know I need a savior. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to be new in life. I want to be new in life. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. That you died for my sin. That you rose again from the dead. Of my own free will. I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Now because of the words of my mouth. And the faith of my heart. I believe. I am a new creation. I have newness of life. And I will enjoy my life. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. I'll shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> Any of you out there, if you listen to this and you ask Jesus into your life, please let us know. And if you want to come and attend one of our services here at the Lighthouse Faith Center, we would welcome you here. Hallelujah. But what if you if you receive Jesus, you need to get into a church. You need to read a Bible because this is where the life is. There's life in the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me pray and let me bless you. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless the people here today. I bless the, all, all those who are listening to this message. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessing into their life. I thank you, Father, for touching each and every one of them. Let this week be the best week of their life. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Hallelujah. Well, we got to do one more thing. Well, before I even get this, anybody here, you need prayer for something? You need prayer? Can we pray for healing for you? You need you need something in life? Let, let's just take a moment and let's, uh, let's, you know, one of the things that one of my teachers told me years ago, is he said to uh, meet the needs of the people. We do that through prayer. You know, a pastor has power, a minister has power to lay hands on the sick. I have power to speak blessings into your life. So if you need a blessing, you need a financial blessing, you need a spiritual blessing, you need healing in your physical body. This is your opportunity to come up and we'll believe God with you. Amen? Hallelujah. And what would you like Jesus to do for you? Hallelujah. He said physical healing and finances in his, in his life. So Father, in Jesus' name, I lay hands on him according to your word. And just like Jesus did, he said, go out and heal the sick. Heal those who are afflicted. These signs shall follow those that believe. They lay hands on those who have an infirmity, and they will recover. I command every bone in this body, every joint, every muscle, every nerve in this body, I command you to be healed. You bow to the word of God. I speak healing in every joint, every muscle, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the word. Father, I did what you said. I laid hands on him, prayed over him. Now he's in your hands. And Father, I pray also, because the Bible said, you desire above all things that we prosper and be in health. Father, he, want, he, want, he needs prosperity, financial blessing. Bless him financially, Father. I pray that, that supernaturally you'll bring finances into his life. And Father, we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, he's healed not only physically, but financially. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Going once? No, I was just watching a car auction. Going twice? <laughs> yes, what would you like to do? Going to heal the car. Okay. Yeah. All right, Bart needs a car. It's got to be automatic. Got to have four doors. <laughs> that work. That work. And wheels. And wheels. It would be helpful. <laughs> that was a good idea to pick up the car you want. Remember, remember me talking about my Suburbans? Well, that's, maybe you should write down, this is the kind of car I want. Then be specific about it. You're pretty specific about it. But uh, you know, maybe I'll just get yourself a picture of what you want. Well, let's come in agreement with Barb that, that somehow God will bring a vehicle to her. Uh, I, know, I know she said four-wheel drive because of our winters here. Uh, works fine. Everything's not falling apart. Um, good on gas. Hallelujah. Let's do all the, all the stuff that she needs. Amen. So, Father, I'm coming in agreement with Barb now for this vehicle. You know exactly where there's one that she needs. And, Father, you make a way for her to get it. We thank you now. We stand in Philippians 4.19 that says, My God shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We declare that this need is met in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Remember what I said last week about amen? Me, amen. So be it. It's like shaking hands with God, right? When you say amen. All right, God, me and you are agreed. So we're agreeing with God and with Barb and with Tim for their needs. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And anything you have, you just believe God for. But if you'll stand with me today and take your Bibles in your hand. <clears throat> got one more little thing to do. When you understand that this is the most important thing, physical thing you have in this life. This is more important than your house. This is more important than your car. This is more important than your money. Because with this, you can get all the other things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, say, this is my Bible. This, this is my Bible. Bible. I will read my Bible. I will read my Bible. I will study my Bible. I will study my Bible. I will do what my Bible tells me to do. I will do what my Bible tells me to do. And then I will prosper. Then I will prosper. I will be in hell. I will be in hell. Because my soul is prospering. Because my soul is prospering. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Because Jesus rose. Because Jesus rose. I also. I also have risen in newness of life. Have have risen in newness I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I live. 
Hallelujah. Because Jesus died. Because Jesus and died. rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now give him the biggest hallelujah you got. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And uh, I believe there's stuff in the back, coffee and stuff yet. Yeah.